fire has always been a fascinating element of nature for mankind, loved, feared, and even worshipped. Its dancing flames can be a tool of prosperity and the cause of unspeakable pain and destruction. In video games, fire is usually depicted as a decisive source of power for many characters who somehow learn the secrets of wielding it. It's no surprise that users of this element are more represented than others, and the King of Fighter series is no exception. Throughout its many iterations, many fire users have joined the roster, but even though they all have pyrokinetic powers, each one of these fighters came up with their own way of how to use and combine it with their own techniques and fighting styles. The result is a diverse cast despite sharing the same hot source of power, and for that reason, I made a list just for our favorite pyromaniacs in the franchise. So without further ado, here's the top 10 fire users in the King of Fighters series. Yes! Come on! With the intention of differentiating himself from his older brother, Andy chose a different path than Terry's brawling and street fighting approach. Andy's fighting style is a mix of diverse disciplines. After he learned the Hakyu Kuseken from Tank Furu at a young age, he went to Japan and mastered the Kopuken and the Shiranui Ryu Ninjutsu martial arts. These disciplines emphasize the control of key energy, which is the basis of Andy's melee attacks, projectiles, stealth techniques and of course fire attacks, hence his presence in this list. However, being a complementary ability and his pyrokinetic faculties are limited. His most famous fire attack techniques is his desperation move, the supersonic swirl, where Andy engulfs his entire body in fire. That being said, he has one attack that is frankly quite impressive, the darkness kick. Not only Andy proves with this technique that he can cast fire with his feet, something that many other pure fire users can't do, but the fire itself looks peculiar with its bluish color. I wonder if it's just a cosmetic thing, or if Andy has a secret correlation with some infamous evil entity. Here's another rival of Terry Bogard, though this one is much less friendlier than Andy. Billy Khan is usually considered as a villain for being the personal bodyguard of the crime boss Gis Howard, even if himself doesn't really hold any evil intentions. As one of the few characters who fight with a weapon, Billy wields a three-sanctioned staff like none other. This staff does not only gives him a long reach, especially when it's split into three parts, it can also be set on fire. How he learns to do that is unknown. His super fire wheel is a prime example of his ability. This technique does not only allow him to throw a huge projectile shaped as a wheel, it also protects him during its creation by burning anybody who gets too close to him. However, Billy is incapable of conjuring any fire without his staff. Though it is noteworthy that the weapon itself isn't the cause of his pyrokinetic powers. It's not like someone like Shingo for example will miraculously be able to cast flames just by using Billy's staff, which means that Billy is a pure fire user, he just needs his staff to do it. With his 89 years old, Chin is the oldest human character in the series. He's been around since the very beginning of the series as the wise mentor of Athena and Kensu. Chin is considered as a legend in Chinese martial arts field as he mastered all different schools of Kung Fu, most notably his personal favorite, the Drunken Man Fist. Interestingly, he integrated his love for Yoyo in his fighting style, allowing him to use his liquor bottles as mid-range projectiles. These silly looking bottles are strong enough to send even the most powerful projectiles back to their throwers if the action is timed correctly. Of course, the most important role of these barrels is obviously to hold alcohol, which Chen not only enjoys greatly, uses as a catalyst to breathe fire. This technique is very fast and could easily catch his opponent by surprise. Add to that, Chen is capable to manipulate the flame in the direction he wants and set his entire body on fire. But for some reason, he never taught any of his students how to fight like him, which is a shame. I would love to see the drunken idol fist someday as an alternative fighting style for Athena.
Initially, it reduced as a slimy, manipulative, and overall annoying brat. Ash was revealed at the end of the saga to be the main hero all along, with benevolent intentions. Gameplay-wise, he has control over a mysterious type of fire with unknown origins. His flames are distinguished with their wax-like form and unique green color. Ash can use this power as long-ranged projectiles with different shapes and properties. With that, he can pressure and annoy his opponents from a safe distance, which matches his personality and makes him a very efficient zoner. Projectiles are not the only tool. Ash is one of the rare flame users capable of creating flames with their feet, as seen with his anti-air attack. After he stole the Yasakani jewel from Iori, he gained a second type of fire, the purple flames, which have their own destructive properties, but more on that later. His ancestor Psyche uses a very similar moveless to Ashes, with the exception of his flames being dark. That and his attacks are actually command based instead of being charge based. But despite being the predecessor lore-wise, all credits go to Ash for being the first character to introduce a charge-based fire user to the series. As the last Kyo clone and the replacement of K49, Nameless made his first and only appearance in K-Wave 2002 Unlimited match. But thanks to his techniques and move list, it was enough to make him a favorite choice and a top tier character by the fans. Nameless gained his pyrokinetic powers when he was infused simultaneously with Kyo and K-Dash's DNA. The result was the acquirement of one of the deadliest fires in the series, characterized by its dark crimson color. Nameless himself is incapable of controlling it and has to wear a special glove all the time to prevent it from going berserk. And so, whenever he wants to use it, he has to take off his glove. Although it sounds like a pain, gameplay-wise, it doesn't present any problem at all. If anything, it allows for a cool animation. Also, using his flames for an extended period of time seems to be pretty taxing on Nameless's energy. That's why he relies more on his other ability, Polymer which gives him the possibility to transform his arm into a drill-like shape. Because of that, Nameless is more famous of his polymorphic arm than his fire capabilities and that is the reason why he is not higher in this list. Still, when he decides to unleash the full potential of his fire, the result is quite spectacular. <laughs> Hey, would you look at that? It's Mai. She finally managed to find a place in the list. Next. Just kidding. Although Mai clearly doesn't understand that being stealthy and avoiding attention is the basis of being a ninja, something she claims to be, she certainly is more than capable of handling most opponents with hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mai fights using the Shiranui Ryu Ninjutsu, a fighting style that emphasizes aerial control and of course, fire attacks. She can produce flames out of thin air and empower her attacks with it. Her anti-air moves are diverse, as she can use both her flame strike special move or the Kagero no Mai super to counter aerial attacks. Much like Andy, she can engulf her entire body with flames and burn anybody she touches. Mai can also channel her pyrokinetic ability through objects and set them on fire, as is the case with her clothing and the infinite fans she uses against her hateful enemies. Despite how odd this series is and how many female characters have joined its roster since its beginning, Mai is still the only female fire user in KOF, and this is undoubtedly the one and only reason why she is so popular. <laughs> Chris of the Flames of Destiny is the nickname of the youngest member of the New Faces team who turned out to be the most faithful servants of Orochi, known as the Heavenly Kings. Each one of these elite group received a special power from the evil entity in the form of a full control over an element of nature. Chris's gift was, you guessed it, pyrokinesis. 
like all other fire users, he can create fire from thin air and cast it with ease in the form of different shapes of projectiles. However, there is a unique feature about Chris's flames. The influence of Orochi manifests itself in its purple color, which is far from being solely cosmetic. In fact, it has the ability to force its victim to enter a stasis-like state, hindering all their moves. Chris also seems to be the only character who can summon flames with both hands simultaneously. Originally, he was created to mirror the protagonist of the series move list, most notably his super Orochi Nagi, which Chris can perform just as effectively as Kyo, albeit with different fire color. And lore-wise, he is supposed to be the ultimate fire user, but that doesn't seem to content Chris as he has the tendency to drop his power for the sake of becoming Orochi himself. For someone who wasn't originally a fire user and acquired his pyrokinetic capabilities through genetic experiments, Keida surely knows how to exploit his ability to the fullest. Thanks to Kiyo Kusanagi's DNA, he can create fire from thin air, but only with his right hand. As mentioned before with Nameless, K-Dash doesn't have total control over his flames, which is why he is forced to use a special glove to maintain it restrained. His fighting style is pretty unique compared to other fire users. K-Dash is the only character who can kick the flames he creates, which is not only badass in itself, it also opens the door for many techniques and possibilities. And surprisingly, the fire can be used as a long-range projectile, an anti-air uppercut, or to toss the opponent in the air, leaving them vulnerable against one of his special attacks. Kaidash also knows how to mix his other techniques like translocation with his fire ability, as is the case with his super. His violent and aggressive behavior during combat is not the result of a wicked and evil heart. Kaidash just wants to wrap up the fight as quickly as possible because he's super lazy and hates all forms of physical exercise. Something I understand perfectly. The original fire user of the series and the person behind the strength of many other fighters, Kyo gained his flames thanks to his Kusanagi lineage. He did not become one of the strongest people in K-Wave's universe miraculously. It's the result of years of rigorous and harsh training under the supervision of his father Saishu. Kyo knows how to use his fire ability to their limit. His flames-based techniques are very diverse, including projectiles, invincible uppercuts, chain combos, pillars of fire, and even explosions. Yet despite all that, he does not rely only on his pyrokinesis. Kyo is also a master of Kempo. Thanks to his resilience in combat, he succeeded in winning many K-Wave titles with his friends Benimaru and Diamond, becoming the model for many fans and the target of nefarious entities with evil agendas. No wonder that Nests chose his DNA to create their army of clones. But Kyo's strongest asset is adaptability. When his techniques don't work, Work, he loses no time inventing new ones, always surprising his enemies and friends alike and pushing the boundaries of his fire capabilities. Before getting to the somewhat obvious number one spot, here's some honorable mentions. Who else could have been the best fire user than the man nicknamed as the flame of the end itself, Iori Agami? Not only he can do pretty much everything his rival can, Iori's fire has a non-negligible advantage. 
Just like Caresses, his flames have the faculty to paralyze the victim and leave them open to all kinds of attacks. Iori inherited this ability due to his Yasakani heritage. His ancestors made a pact with Orochi to gain such power. The price was heavy though. All mothers of this clan were destined to die in childbirth and all heirs to die at a young age. But since K-Wave characters never age anyway, I'd say it's still a pretty good deal for Iori. While it's true that Iori's flames are purple, symbol of Orochi's curse, Iori still has his original Yasakani crimson fire. It rarely shows up and even he is surprised when he casts them. Like the time he used his crimson flames to kill Genets and subjugate Orochi. A technique that is used in later games as a super and shows him using the said rare fire. That proves that Iori is not completely under Orochi's influence. Which we already know after seeing the ending of K-Wave 97. He is very proud of his pyrokinetic abilities. And when he lost them at the end of K-Wave 11 he was willing to to sacrifice everything to regain them again, for he believes that it is his duty and destiny to burn his eternal rival to ashes, but we know he is not serious. And that was my list of fire users in K-Wave, who is your favorite pyromaniac in the series? Share your opinion with us in the comments. Special thanks to my patrons for their generous support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And why not consider subscribing to the channel. Stay safe and thanks for watching.